orange and blue things. Beat the other team with defense and a few swings. L F G M. It's an orange and blue thing. Listen to the show when people with these dudes bring. If you did listen to the show when people with these dudes bring. If you didn't know, it's an orange and blue thing. Hope to win the championship in a few rings. We're talking baseball. It's an orange and blue thing. Walk off if the game's tied like shoestrings. It's a Mets podcast, orange and blue thing. Beat the other team with defense in a few swings. LFGM, it's an orange and blue thing. What's up, Mets fans? I'm already over here laughing. We are. Cu- <laughs> if you're waiting for the live stream to start at 9.30 a.m., it is 9.36 a.m. Give us a freaking break. Early show today. Uh, I'm not a morning person. I'm sorry. Julia's not. This is not morning, by the way. You know, well, you'll this know when. This is morning for me. I know your birthday's tomorrow. Uh, you got a little bit of a pass. You, it wasn't your fault. I wasn't really ready either. You did walk in at 9. 9. 9.29. 9.29. <laughs> but uh, listen, I, my ass was in the seat by 9.30. It, it was. I would have been ready to go. No, you were ready. You were ready. I mean, what do you really have to do? Like, I'm, I'm supposed to be prepping, getting this shit together. And then when we were re- ready to actually start, I'm like, yeah, well, you're here. But I didn't finish the stuff I was supposed to do. So, it's okay. Um, thanks for joining us on a little early bird special. <laughs> Julia is about to go to, what, like a winery or something? Yeah. My friend Katie, who is a night shift nurse and all of her night shift nurses' friends. So time is a construct to them. And going to a vineyard at 11 a.m. on a Thursday is perfectly reasonable. Um, and I don't really have a real job either. I mean, they have obviously they you have real jobs. You always say that, but, but that's you have to really stop downplaying that you own a business at, <laughs> when you're in your early 20s. I, I know. It's... And can uh, can you pass me that water, please? I'm talking to Lizzie behind the scenes here. <laughs> We're all over the place today. This is going to be a little random show. I Thank really should much. be drinking water. I'm about to go drink wine for hours. I haven't eaten today. It's going to be a hot mess. Well, the but... good thing is it's not super hot out. Yeah. So it's not like one of those days where you're going to be naturally dehydrated. Yeah, so that's true. Just, you know, have a couple. I'm sure. Well. With that crew you're rolling with, I bet you you're <laughs> no. probably gonna be drinking like on the way out in the party. Well, bus. that's I think that's the main like I think that's where we're gonna be drinking the most. Like I I keep bottles of wine at Katie's house just so there's always something there for me to drink. So I already know I'm gonna have a full <laughs> bottle on the bus and going. Katie there. is the type that doesn't allow you to have like an empty g- no. cup. Like when we're ever over her her house or barbecue in the yard, I'll have basically like a half a beer left, and she'll come over and like pick it up. She's like, "You're ready," and she'll just come Literally. back. Literally, like shit, I'm trying to like. Like, take it easy, Kate, you know? <laughs> Kate, Kate, Lizzie says it's because she's Colombian, and it's totally true. But <laughs> Katie's main personality trait, she has several wonderful personality traits, but her most known one is getting her friends as drunk as possible. Yeah, but responsibly, Responsibly, of in a safe space, which is fine. But, um, yeah, I'm going to be drunk in a couple hours. <laughs> Good. So let's talk about some responsibility because this yeah. is somewhat a Met show, right? It's a little uh, bit. Orange and blue thing where we talk about getting tuned up on a Thursday or baseball, <laughs> but... The Mets have 11 games to go. This weird, wacky season with uh, pretty much every team making the playoffs. The Mets aren't even a 500 baseball team. They are 22 and 27 with 11 to play, and they are somehow not out of it. So Buster Olney from ESPN last night, well, actually this morning, 2.45 in the morning. Go to sleep, Buster. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe he was waiting for some like West Coast games to Fine, end or whatever. Fair. But the uh, NL wildcard contenders... The Mets are still right now have a 19% chance of making the playoffs. I, I literally somehow. hate that. They like never, they don't win series. I, the, I, I, uh, I feel like they win a game and it's like a big deal. Yeah. Like, last night was, was huge though. I mean, yeah. if you're going to do anything every day now is a must win, especially against a team ahead of you, like the Phillies. Right. But you know what? It's not like the Mets just have to do their job. Everyone else has to blow up. Right. And you know, they are four games behind the Marlins who still, I don't think have played all their games. So I don't really know how the, it's going to work I, out. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to they're do They're going to probably have some double headers coming up. I I don't know. Yeah. But uh, with the way that shit is this season, yesterday I tweeted this out and I was like, you know, the Mets, who are now 22 and 27, in 11 days from now might be <laughs> a playoff team and have like the 2020 playoffs t shirts, uh, which I'm not making. <laughs> like, I, 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 I already said, like, seriously, like, I'm not condoning this I, behavior. <laughs> like, the seven line will not be making 2020 yeah. playoff shirts yeah. if they somehow make it in right. and get to the next round and get, you know, whatever. If they legitimately CSDS do something, series, yeah. sure. But just to get, like, the participation trophy of being yeah. one of 
16, 16 more than half the teams to make the playoffs i don't know i don't know if majestic so or whoever makes those like the locker room stuff right you, you, you've i think you probably bought one uh you know like the model special yeah. like after they won it what uh what it was, was there again? was new york wants it more Pine uh the pennant will rise so all that stuff yeah i mean we're not we're not partaking in that nah. so i which is as a business, that's like, especially at a business of this year. <laughs> that like to could be like, use it, but like, no. No. Nah, Our I, morals are more important. I would just be like embarrassed, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Like, to, to make them and, and to, with a straight face, be like, you guys are I genuinely this. don't even think they would sell. Because I think most fans are in the boat of like, why would I want <laughs> to wear this to celebrate my sub 500 team? Well, the, the bad thing Who that, stumbled into the playoffs. We talked about this and I don't know, you, you're a busy girl. Yeah. And uh, yesterday the, the news came out that Rob Manfred actually thinks or says that after this year, they are probably going to continue with this. I saw that. Fugazi. And I saw Howie plans. Rose went off. Yeah, and Howie. as he does, I, th- th- Howie Rose coming to Twitter is one of the best things to happen this year because he just he spits out the truth about everything and he doesn't hold back. But it's uh, who wants that? Who? Well, I have not heard. I'll tell a you single who wants it. The owners want well, of it because course. their teams make more money when of they make course, the playoffs. Of course, but like not a single. I have not seen a single fan be in favor of this. Even the teams like us, who like this, would technically help us this year, but we don't want it. <laughs> like people no. care about it. Like actually, you I know, said this a month ago. I said I'd rather the Mets ridiculous. actually like tank than yes. play somewhat okay because I didn't want. I was. I didn't trust Brody to not deplete well, the farm system again I'm like that's you know what? what i was gonna I'd say i'd rather they wave the white flag and just be out but with this weird freaking these rules you're never going to be out so why play 162 but, baseball games to be a team that could just barely get to the playoffs and still have an equal shot well right but like also so my my mindset has always been like when it comes to the mets i never want them to be like on the cusp of winning a middle like either they have to get into the playoffs or they need to tank and they need to lose hard because what ownership has showed us in the past is that if we're like almost there they're not going to do anything because they're going to be like, oh, well, when we get these players back from injury next year and everybody's playing healthy, like we're going to be good enough. Like we'll have that extra win or two and we'll make the playoffs and we don't need to do anything this offseason. But we have new owners coming we this do. off season, So I'm not that scared about that anymore because I don't even think it matters. I am just very – I mean, I don't know. We'll see personally. I, I'm not sure if Brody is going to stick around when – there is a new owner in town who knows. It really depends on when this voting happens. Yeah, but I, I just don't think that our new owner is going to have the mentality of like, oh, well, we just missed the playoffs, so we don't need to do anything this offseason. Well, the thing with that is the uh, usually a, a vote of this nature would happen at the MLB winter meetings right. between like the, the owners and all that, but they That's canceled not gonna happen, it. Right? They canceled yeah. it. Yeah. So now it might if, if it's something where it comes down to like, all right, the owners sit down in a Zoom room. That's and what probably what's going to happen. It's which just like they a could Zoom. do like now. Yeah. Which they, you know, they won't because you know some teams are, you know, we're battling too, but some teams right. are, you know, they're concentrating more on the playoffs. Right. Uh. So who knows? Maybe November, they they sit down on this Zoom meeting and they figure it out. Yeah. You know, and if and if it happens that instantly, then who knows? Brody right. could be gone before Thanksgiving. You know. Sad. <laughs> well, it's, that's sad. It's just reality. You know, yeah. we talked about this too. Like Brody, a first-time GM who was came from the agency world. Uh, you know, a lot of the decisions the Mets have made in many years is money-based. Yes. Related yes. is m- based on salaries. And also, so let's why just... is Joe Girardi not our manager right now? Money. Yes. Why? It, why is not Brody only money but GM right control? Because I don't know if you saw all these reports coming out about like the negotiations that were going on with Steve Cohen or whatever, but there was something that like apparently Jeff Wilpon was really gunning hard for A Rod and J Lo to win because they had told him that like they would let him keep some control over the team. Right. You bring in a guy like Brody with no front office experience he's very easy to control and to tell what to do and he's not really gonna have much to say about it because he doesn't really know what he's doing and like he could use the help so yes definitely money but I also think he was very easy for Jeff Wilpon to have his say which we know is true because didn't it come out that like or something like Brody was texting Mickey Calloway from his couch once about like bullpen decisions and obviously (laughs) that wasn't coming from Brody like 
I don't know. It's just there, there's a lot of moving parts there, and I don't I, think. I was messing around with Brody when he was sitting with us last yeah. year about, uh, you know, that was right after that came out yes. with, like, the texting or the calling from, you know, to the dugout. Yeah. I'm like, don't be making any decisions out here. <laughs> you know, and he was like, he was good with it. He was funny That's, with it. I, Brody genuinely seems like a nice guy, a good sport, and, like, has been great to the fans, has yeah. been has been able to make jokes about himself, which is very important. And, like, I, I feel bad because I, I really he's just... he's sitting near you. Isn't he sitting with you in the group? He's sitting directly next to me. In the car with <laughs> the... the seven the, line army. They yeah. keep calling it cardboard cutouts. They're but not. actually, Gary the other day was like, the plastic the corrugated, plastic. which, yeah. you know, that sounds long. It's harder to but whatever. really say. But, yeah, we're, we're, we're seat neighbors now. But yeah. I, I genuinely feel bad because I feel like he was kind of put in a position to fail. He should not have... His first front office job should not have been general manager and it, putting him in the conflict of interest where several of his clients are on the team like i don't know i just think he well you know what a he, little in over his he head he locked maybe. up the grom though that's so, true so that's a good that's, we, owe, we owe him our lives that's for his, that his gold star right there uh give us a call if you want to shout uh not shout if you give us a call if you want to <laughs> chime in and add something you to can the shout show, at us i don't anything care anything interesting Yell you want to talk about i know the phone was ringing like instantly when we start started the stream i was terrified that that meant that like our mics weren't working <laughs> yeah right uh six three one three eight eight five one nine five also remember to share, share the, the show, show. If you're watching live, because we do give away some free Mets stuff each week. If you're waiting for your stuff from last week, I'm I'm horrible with that. It's the same with Big Apple Trivia. Oh, yeah. I make the gift card codes for, for Julia. And she definitely, it's not her fault. She lets me know, like, right away. Okay, we had this many yeah. winners. And then I usually, like, curse and go, <laughs> damn it. Why <laughs> do so many people winning so money, money every Wednesday night? <laughs> but don't worry. The stuff's coming. Uh, share the show if you're watching on Facebook. There's just a little button there. It's very easy. If you're watching live, hit the share button, um, which I feel like. I don't know. It doesn't stop the show for anyone. Like you could, you could do that and continue yeah. watching. But the amount of views, views that we get uh -huh. to the amount of people that share the show, it's like if you're watching the show and you get a chance to get free stuff, wouldn't you just hit the just button? Share the anyway, show. share the show on Facebook. If you're watching on Twitter right now, retweet the show. If you're watching the replay on Instagram, which goes up in about an hour, uh, just comment. I want some free Met stuff, and we will randomly select the winners next week. So right now we're going to announce last week's winners on Twitter. It's at Torna Joe. T O R N A Joe on Facebook, Dennis O'Toole, and on Instagram, Mass is more M A S I Z M O R E, and uh, that's it. So I just got a text from Mr. Joe DeMeo, who who the other day I wrote something about like, hey, when Steve Cohen when the ink dries and it's actually official, does he also own the Cyclones? Does yeah. he own Syracuse Mets? Does he own valid question uh, St. Lucie Mets? And you think he's I think what he told me was that Cohen will also take on ownership of the Syracuse team and St. Lucie for whatever reason I, that which was above over my head yeah. he's not going to own Brooklyn uh, at least for the so time do being do the will bonds still I don't know I was confused but he just texted me about the vote and he said if the vote is November Brody will 100% stay I don't know why he's saying that. You'd ruin your offseason trying to find a guy, I get that. Okay. I expect them to hire a president of baseball ops to sit above Brody. Role was previously held by Jeff Wilpon. I don't think you'll see much, if any, subtraction this offseason. I think it'll be more addition. That kind All of right. makes sense because think about it. They can't make Joe's any moves until guy. they have a GM, and they don't want to waste time being able to get free agents having to look for a GM first. So that makes sense. I get that. It does make sense. So thanks thanks for that Uh Mr. PSL to Flushing. It's a obvious, you know, a great name to have when you're you're following the team yeah. so closely from the minors up to the big. So PSL to Flushing, give him a follow. I know he also Thanks, has a podcast. Joe. You know, I, maybe that's why he texted me to on like it. have me. No, it's out. His podcast is out. Oh yeah. For me to like give him a free plug. Do it. So there it is. Free plug. <laughs> Joe's podcast. I think it's called uh, That's So Mets, which is a great name. for I a haven't podcast. been on Twitter. I don't. I'm sorry, Joe. I'm gonna go listen. I'm gonna listen to it on my way to. The winery is getting drunk. No, up. you're not. Don't lie. No, no, no. Like on my way to Katie's house. Oh, okay. Not in the party bus. Sorry, Joe. Right. <laughs> I don't think it'll. I won't hear it, but I will listen to it on my way to Katie's house because so I didn't know it was out yet. Last night, as I'm putting Amelia down to sleep, I get a text message from you. You said, "What the hell? What's going on?" Jacob Degrom was pulled after two innings, where rough. everyone collectively said, "You know, that's it. We're going to see him next season," uh, which might <laughs> still very well be true. But I'm so annoyed. He downplayed it pretty heavily in the in the post game press conference with with uh, the beat. And uh, he says he actually felt tightness when he was warming up in Buffalo and he played through it and it, it was fine. And last night it started barking again. So just to be safe, he got out. But if he's really going for this third Cy Young, I he know. can't. 
he can't. Uh, his ERA ballooned last night. It jumped by like a full. He th- went from first in the league what is to it now? fifth. No way, really? Yeah. He had a 1.69, I think, it's and now it's something. 2.07, and that's now fifth best in the National League. So we really, not that I, I am, fuck it, I'm rude. I'm rooting against the other pitchers. I hope everybody else has a shitty outing, their next outing, and DeGrom, because th- th- that's how quickly it happened. It took two innings for that to happen. But it also, you think about it, like, if he had was healthy enough and able to, like, pitch the rest of that game and, like, didn't give up any more runs, like, that would have helped a little because he would have had more innings, but... Yeah, eh, it's it's just sucks when you're it's kind of like playing with fire when your ERA is that tiny, like one run will do so much. So it sucks, but I, I don't want him to be hurt. And it would be really, 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 really stupid for him to put himself at risk to injure himself further for this season, which is just like, I mean, the only reason you would do it is for that third Cy Young, which I would understand and respect. Go for it. How many people can say they went three Cy Youngs in a row? Go for it. But like. If you're hurting yourself for the good of the team, come on. <laughs> it's fine. 19% chance. No, yeah, I don't not, care. It's not over I yet. I don't want them to. Listen, I'm not last year stuff, I, I was doing the whole, whole like, uh, we didn't hear no bell. It ain't over yet. Yada, which is true. Yeah. Like, which is, but, but last year they were fun to watch down the stretch. Well, that like, August they were actually September exciting. Yeah. So 9-11 was last week. And you know what's crazy? I am almost embarrassed that we didn't even touch on anything 9-11 related last week. Um I think our show was on the 10th. It's my bad. We should have definitely talked about 9-11 yeah. and the importance of, of everything that goes around uh, the date and the history of, of um, everything terrible that happened in our country. Uh, but Joe Quinn, who um, we know from... Our Felt friend. Uh, which, Lizzie, man. did you have the hot dogs, by did the way? Did you get your glizzy, Lizzie? I... Your, your mic's yeah. um, I wanted to take a picture and like do this whole ordeal and I ended up barbecuing them at night. So like whatever. <laughs> and I was starving. So I like scarfed them down. But I have to say that it actually was one of the most delicious hot dogs I've ever had. Wow. So I had the hot dog just on its own uh-huh. with like first I wanted to try just the, the meat and yeah. see like what the hot dog was actually like. And then I put it in the bun with the with the mustard it was really good wow. i, I st- well i stole the mustard from them you you had like your own mustard yeah but it w- i used like a spicy yeah mustard. But their mustard was freaking awesome was it so yeah definitely go check them out really really but really good joe wow. who uh posted this tweet on on 9 11 mm-hmm. um julia had texted me about it and she's like connected the dots she's like oh wow this is the same joe from yeah, yeah. like so if you don't know the backstory, Joe's brother passed away. He worked at the World Trade Center. He passed oh. away on 9-11. And uh, Joe and his brother decided in his uh, to honor his brother, which they had an idea to um, start up or restart the brand of Feldman's, Feldman's. of Coney Island. So um, Joe put this tweet up there. He says, I met Pete Alonzo a year ago. He said he wanted to support veterans, bring the first responder hats back, and that he would never forget my brother. Then after that, I said he donated $25,000 to Headstrong. He wrote about my brother today on 9-11, and the first responder hats are back. So pretty wild. So cool. And uh, you should definitely check out this tweet. It is from Joe Quinn, MBGC. And you probably saw Pete Alonzo on Instagram, which I I love this. It's like, that he, that he this. hand wrote it, he and it wasn't like, like a, a stupid iPhone note. It was like a journal entry, yeah. basically. Uh, it's so which much more personal. I would never be able to do that because... A lot of times, if I'm drafting an email or writing a, a, a iPhone note you need or that whatever, spell check. not only that, <laughs> you go back and you think you think yeah. twice about what you're writing, and then you delete it and right. you change some things around. This is just this Perfect. is basically one take. Yeah, and uh, he he writes all about the importance of uh, be, not only being a New York Met, living in New York, and the importance of 9/11, and he highlights stories that he had heard from fans, uh, fans who had a member, a family member, yeah. or someone close to them pass away, and one of them happened to be so cool, Joe's brother. So very cool of Pete. And, you know, earlier in that day on 9-11, I, as I do every year, yeah. wrote, you know, they should wear the hat tonight, but they, they won't because MLB, you know, is Yeah, we can't downplay they... how impressive it is that he actually got them to wear the hats. They have been trying to do that for years. I think I remember it was like the one time David Wright did something like against the rules was when he was they wearing the hat in the him. dugout. Yeah. yeah. And they took it away from him. But like that, that's that's not easy to get them to change that. So I think that, you know, I don't want to I definitely don't want to downplay this at all. And I don't want this to come off the wrong way. Right. But. You've seen a lot of people like 
even when we had our show and we're talking about Dom Smith kneeling yeah. and the protest and the players deciding to not play the game that night. Oh, I know um, you're going with this. So mm -hmm. a lot of people that feel very strongly one way or the other mm -hmm. about MLBs and the players' support of Black Lives Matter and all the protests right. and everything that they, they did as a united team. Yeah turned off a lot of people mm -hmm. so you can read the comments on our show you can read the comments on anything i post you yep. can read anyone's comments on the mets whatever yep. i checked out i'm not watching who cares i don't care if the grom yeah has a no hitter tonight i'm not watching yep so there is a large segment of fans and people in this country who feel that way mm -hmm. so i feel if the state of the world is not what it is i agree that they would not have worn those hats i thought that too because then this was an easy way for them to like show and not listen first responders deserve support right. they deserve like we can't we can have a whole other show talking about the heroism and the type of personality and bravery it takes to do what the people did on 9-11 and do every single day i can never do it and like that's known and they deserve support and they deserve to be celebrated but i do think too it was kind of a way for them to kind of even the playing field of like well, we're supporting both sides. Let's just be honest. It seems very phony. Yeah. So for everyone to put as much pressure as they've put on the league, the team themselves, yeah. the players, how he rose with Joe Torre last year when Joe Torre was in the yeah. booth. And, you know, not that the seven line is this strong force, but us, like every year, yeah. everyone's tweeting the league, adding the Mets, adding MLB, like yeah. do something about this. Why is this such a big deal? Right. And because of the way the world is right now, I could picture the same people who decided – hey, maybe we should have them come out at 8.30 and then go back. And like bro, that whole thing with yep. Brody, we don't know what goes on behind closed no, doors. Absolutely. And I'm not saying that this wasn't genuine. I hope it was. Yeah. But it seems very fishy. I will say. That this year they wear them. But then you have fans on, on the internet. Oh, I can't believe he just, uh, Cano decided to pick NYPD. Uh, this person decided to pick FDNY. Like this guy's wearing this. Because like, people are rational and they can understand that the NYPD made – unbelievable unfathomable sacrifices those day, that day and plenty of other days after that and there's no discrediting that there's no taking away from that like it, it doesn't have to be so black and white like people can just be empathetic and uh, whatever that's a whole other story but what I don't want to take away is that I don't know if you know the league's decision to allow that was genuine but 100% Pete Alonso's mission in doing it was completely from the right place and but completely But the league genuine. is also the league across the board is definitely also seeing uh a decline in, in viewership from some right. fans who feel that way so why wouldn't they also be like yeah. you know what if we're going to bend the rules may as well be now yeah you know um but as we've said on the show I support police I also support black lives matter right um but depending on which way that you want to see that there are people on every side of the coin that are bad people. Mm -hmm. There are bad eggs in the black lives matter movement that want to ruin what the actual message is supposed to be. Right. And it makes the other people feel, well, they're, that's a terrorist organization or that they, they purposely want to burn places down, which isn't what the initial statement right. is supposed to be. The same thing with, I support police. I don't support police that kill people right. uh, unjustly or, right. you know, of, of course some bad people are going to get shot. I mean, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Uh, if bad people have guns and they're shooting the police, they're probably going to get shot. Right. Uh, should un unarmed men get shot in the back? No. No. Uh, and we can all agree with that. Yeah. The same thing that happened with, uh, you know, Floyd. Should he have died by this, this cop kneeling on his back? No, no, absolutely not. But you can say all these things as truth. I know. And also say, I do support good cops. Yeah, everyone so, is very, it's just, it's it's the state of the world right now. It's, it just it's you're, you're with fishy. us or against us on both sides. And it's just, people need to learn to practice empathy as opposed to being right in a situation. It just seemed a little, I'm glad they did it. I loved seeing it. Uh, hopefully it's, I, honestly, now that once they open the doors, there it's it. Like they're yeah. every year, it's back. Right. Like they can't say, "All right, it was okay." In no, absolutely. It's not going to be okay next year. So once it's back, it's back, which right. is great. It should never have been gone, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't have taken what's going on in the world to change their minds. No, absolutely. Um, I agree. Speaking of changing people's minds, what's this guy's name again? Martino. Oh my god. We have to talk about this Let because him live. I have to. I'm not trying to throw you under the bus here, <laughs> but. Because you had a good personal experience with this guy. Yes, Andy Martino is a very nice person. Doesn't take away from all the other shit he puts on the internet. 
that is definitely just to do this. Stir the pot, but get people like, angry, maybe they'll retweet. I don't know if it's to get people angry. It's to start conversation. It's not. The, I'm, I'm scrolling back because he tweets so much stuff that I have to find this. <laughs> um, where's the ratio on this, too? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ratio. <laughs> Check this out. All right. Leave Andy Martino. You could say leave him alone all you want, but he's definitely going to have to get some shit over here for a second. Uh, Andy Martino on September 11th. Now that MLB has allowed the Yankees and Mets to wear first responder hats, they could find themselves in an awkward position of ranking tragedies. That was always the concern. What happens the next time a team wants to commemorate a terrible event? Is 9-11 the only carve out? New questions arise. So 796 comments, which (laughs) aren't in like favor of this. And... 300 likes which i'm surprised even got that many so andy martino who he knows what he's doing here you're not ranking tragedies but this, this was but this was what joe tory said are you not talking about a, a hurricane you're not talking about um you know another event thousands of americans were murdered on our right. soil in new york city and in pennsylvania it's and in unique... dc it's it's a very unique situation it's not it's like a pearl harbor yeah. this is a big deal yeah so saying giving a uh, uh, a, a team the right to wear a 9-11 hat is not saying, well, um, you know, a, a hurricane happened and some people died in, uh, you know, I'm right. not trying to downplay it. Right. People died in New Orleans or wherever. A, a team close to there is going to wear a special hat. It's not, it's a, it's a very unique situation. I, I agree, but I don't, that, that wasn't his thought. That's what Joe Torrey said for years and whoever else was in charge of it before him as to why they couldn't was because, well, we don't want to compare tragedies. We don't want to take any loss of life away from another and make one seem lesser than the other. <laughs> Please. That- <laughs> But that that's that wasn't Andy <laughs> Martino's thought process. That was the legitimate argument. Not that it's a legitimate because I don't agree with it, but that was the argument against it. And so I think he's just commenting on, OK, well, how does this open the door for new tragedies? I don't think it was this like shot at 9-11. Like, I really, really don't. But well, because of the who he here. is and the, the kind of takes that he has, of course, people are going to see it that way. But I, did, I didn't think it was that. I don't know. He's horrible. <laughs> I can't. I mean, I've never met him. And honestly, it's the kind of thing where people think that because I don't like your online presence, I, I yeah. wouldn't like you in person. Yeah. I mean, I've never met Andy. If right. I do, I'm not going to be like, hey, you're such an asshole. I yeah. like your tweets. But like he, he does. I feel like he does this on purpose. And we know plenty of people who are nice people in person yeah. that are dicks on the Internet. Oh, yeah. We know. <laughs> oh, yeah. We a know lot. a bunch. We know a lot of people that are assholes on the Internet, yeah. but actually really nice people in person. Yeah. And maybe he's one of them. But what he does on the Internet whether it's to like get people to hate him, so maybe they'll watch him on S and Y. I don't know. I don't get it. I really don't get it. So um, he's been around a while. He's he's doing something right. And also because people kept saying like, oh, when Steve Cohen takes over, like they can fire Andy Martino. But um, apparently the Will Ponds are maintaining control of S and Y. For now, Steve Cohen but, does not get S and Y. But after like the what is it, ten years from now, if they decide to not yeah. sell S and Y to him, he could just decide to not broadcast the Mets on S and Y. That would make me sad. And it would be on like the, the seven line network or something <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Wherever he decides that the games are going to be played, maybe it's here. You're, you're just like every, with every episode, you're getting like one step. Like, all right, here we Listen, go. The I'm gala, the bobblehead. Sure, I'm making sure that I'm invited to the gala. <laughs> yes. We're going to just keep talking about and it. And if Kelly I've, happens to be sick that day and, you know, me and Lizzie will be around. So I'm going to ask for four to, oh, I ask for five. <laughs> you can come. Or six if you want a plus one. <laughs> Um, yes. <laughs> Let's so go. yeah, the gala, the bobblehead, whatever else we can be involved with with the Cohen family. <laughs> because honestly, how could you not I'll babysit your kids? Like <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. What do you need? How could you not want? I'll to walk be a your part dogs. You have dogs. If you need a dog sitter, hit me up. <laughs> Listen, if uh, he probably watches the show, or someone watches <laughs> the show that's associated with him, they own the freaking team now. Let's go. They'll probably check in on us. Um, <laughs> anyway, I don't even know where I was going with that. But I do want to pull up. I was going to say, you're typing Pat Mahomes. <laughs> yeah, because something came out the other day that I wanted to show you. Um, let me see if I can find it. I don't even know what his Twitter account is. Um, this is a disaster Go to people. Right now. No, it's okay. Yeah, there you go. Everything's fine. Um, anyway, we'll talk about something else for a second while I find it. So um, the playoff bubble. What they're doing now is, have you seen it? <laughs> it makes not, no sense. It does make sense. And it, it, it does make sense if you think about it. Are you talking about having fans at some of the games? No, 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 no. Because that doesn't make sense. Um, 
well, they did it in football. They're already talking about having fans next year. Well, whatever. But, like, what's the point of having a bubble if you're going to bring fans and outside people into the stadium? Unless you're going to make them, like, nobody's allowed to sit field level so nobody can get close enough to the players that, like, whatever. But I don't know. I don't know. What what were you talking about in terms of the bubble? Because that's what I saw was that they, they're thinking of having fans for, like, I think the World Series or the – championship well, it's series not, it's, not, it's not ruled out yet so yeah. i'm just trying to look for the the way that the bracket works because what they're doing is they pick neutral sites so the um I, fuck i don't have it yet. <laughs> i had it this morning and i was like oh you know what i should save morning show morning i should show. save who put this up because it had a whole bracket and um i'm screwing it up now but the way that it's working um the texas rangers have a new ballpark yeah so that's where the world series is right. going to be um the Texas Rangers stink, so there's no chance that they're making the World Series. Poor so it, that's an impartial right. uh, stadium. So you know that was good for them. And that, also, that, Texas is one of the more lenient states with like letting people do things. I don't know. So I because th- I I think that was the whole thing is that like oh well Texas stadiums would like allow fans to go, but they don't know if California stadiums would, which is where I think one of the other series were supposed to take place. But I don't so know. It's, this yeah, San Diego, a mess. So the way, oh, here we go. <laughs> This saves me a whole lot of trouble here. <laughs> All right. So if you can't see this, the way that the wild card series works is that people are still the, the teams are still going to be home. Once they get to the NLDS, uh, the National League Division Series, that's in Arlington, Texas, which is an American League ballpark. So both teams would be, uh, you know, no one has a, a chance of having right. their home t- a home uh, stadium. Uh, also, Houston, Texas, is another uh, National League Series ballpark. The NLCS will be in Arlington, Texas. The NL, the ALCS will be in San Diego. So again, uh, NL teams playing in the AL ballpark. Got it. Uh, vice versa. Uh, so that's the way it's going to work. So um, the bubble, what they're doing is the teams are going to go to these cities and they're going to be in the bubble. Their their wives and girlfriends mm-hmm. can go with them and stay in the hotels. That I like. The wives of the coaches and staff can't because there's not enough room in these hotels in the beginning. That's Once sad. if they make it on then they can. Okay. If they make if they make it you know make it in and uh, move on then they can. So that's the way it's going to work for that, but It's like um, you got to play for your right to see your wife. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's so rough. But the whole thing with this uh with this expanding to next year, I'm just not a fan of it, and I, I, I never will be. I feel like playing 162 games, but I and I think that's kind of to what get they're by working the skin towards your teeth too. To being a 500 team, that's ridiculous. Yeah, I think they're trying to work towards less games, which is just like less games. I don't think so because they they want pe- well. Once fans are allowed to actually go to the games again, uh, you know those home teams need that revenue of fans yeah. going to the ballpark. So I think what they're not going to go to like from 162 to 60 games. It's yeah. just not going to happen. But for teams to all basically make the playoffs, if you're so if you have a pulse, stupid. you're going to make the playoffs. It's ridiculous. Uh, give us a call if you want six three one three eight eight five one nine five. Don't forget to share the show if you're listening afterwards on iTunes, all that good stuff. Make sure you share, rate, subscribe, and uh, let your friends know about Orange and Blue thing. I still can't find Pat Mahomes. What's going on here? Uh, did he block you? No. That could happen when you get blocked. You can't find the people. Uh, it's crazy. Sir Pat Mahomes. Oh, here we go. Oh. Okay. Why did he come up like twelfth on that list of Pat Mahomes? I don't know. Because if there's anywhere prominent, Pat. Oh God, this look is amazing. At this, this is a birthday cake <laughs> for me. So look, I thought he about made me a Coors Light birthday Coors cake. Coors Light. Julia's birthday is tomorrow. How could you not give us or mail us or come charge on, us Coors for this cake? Light. I've been kissing your ass for months now. <laughs> Where's my cake? Chill way to start the birthday. Thanks for the cake. Oh Coors my God! And it's twenty fifth. I'm turning 25. This is literally you guys are my birthday. Basically, cake. twins. We're twins. That's crazy. Wow. That's so really cool. If you're listening afterwards, you know you can make excellent things out of <laughs> cakes. Now, <laughs> who makes cakes that that we're friends with? Uh, Michelle. Yeah, Michelle. Michelle. She's can making Michelle, mine this. Can this she weekend. make? Can she make this? I don't know if she can make it by Saturday, but she can do her best, and it'll be beautiful. All right. So Michelle, this is the task. <laughs> Uh, anyway, if you're not listening and, and you're if you're not watching and you're listening, it, it looks like a case of Coors Light, and it says "Happy Birthday" to uh, Mr. Pat Mahomes. So he definitely got to kick back and hit reset and chill, and you guys should as well. Amazing. Uh, plenty of time. It's mer- it's morning. It's 10 a.m. Yeah. I'm not drinking Coors Light yet, but I probably will later. I'll bring mine on the bus. Bring a case. I should. All right. So girls, if you're listening, case of Coors Light <laughs> coming your coming. way. 
We got some beers here, thanks to Coors Light. <laughs> uh, there is plenty of time to get on their website and get some beers delivered before tonight. Every day is now a must win for the Mets, so definitely want to uh, kick back and hit reset and chill. Go to get.coorslight.com to type in your location, scroll down and pick whatever you'd like to get delivered, add it to your cart, and they will deliver it right to your doorstep. So definitely make sure the, um, the mountains are blue before you crack it open. You want to make sure it's primed and ready to go. Reset and chill. Always remember to drink responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. You got it. All of it. Nailed Did it. Did I nail it? Nailed it. <laughs> I'm going tomorrow morning. I'm going to be on a ferry to... A ferry? I'm taking the, the motor home on the ferry. It's very, wow. it's freaking expensive to bring it on the ferry. Yeah, that sounds like a you gotta lot. you got to pay per foot. So normally anything over 20 feet, you got to pay per foot. Wow. And the motor home with the dirt bike on the back is like 31 feet. So you feet. have to pay per foot? feet after the 20 feet yeah, or yeah, yeah. Oh, okay 20 feet so i have 11 then, extra yeah. feet it's not cheap but it's definitely beats driving around right. on friday rush hour traffic to get to massachusetts right so is the whole family coming just me wow uh the northeast vet championship is this weekend at let's Southwick, go king massachusetts. get it i don't know about <laughs> king uh yeah it's if anyone cares and they want to look it up southwick's track is known as one of the most difficult tracks to ride in the country or Let's maybe go. in the world. It's mostly sand. It's not that many jumps, but it's like brutal. Okay. So you need like special tires and yada, yada, but the laps are longer than I'm used to. And it's always four laps. Right. So a normal race for me is like nine minutes. This is going to be like 13. You could do it. I don't know. It's you gonna got be it. Tough. I feel like by like, you could do it. Lap I got three, faith. You see the white, white flag means one <laughs> lap to go. Yeah. I'm like, Oh my God, I don't know if I get three more, <laughs> another, another lap in me. But, um, Do you get to practice first? Yeah, tomorrow's practice. And then I, I raced this track when I was 12. So I was thinking, I was telling my buddy, I'm like, if I got around the track when I was 12, yeah. I could do it now. But I was my lap time then was probably five minutes. But still, uh, you got it. We'll see. So the, You could do it, man. Let's you can do go. It. Just don't get in your head like you usually do, but you <laughs> could do it. No, I've, I've had a little bit more confidence lately, but it's more so just like uh, the endurance factor. Kind of like, have you ever... You ever run? You ever run like a long distance? Unfortunately, yes. Well, yeah, you used to run, right? Me and Katie would do some 5Ks. Okay. Yeah. So I used to do this thing called hashing. It has nothing to do with smoking. Uh, I've talked about it on the show My before. thought was hash browns, so there's two types of people. Well, you could smoke hash, <laughs> or you could eat hash browns, or you could run a hash. If anyone cares and they want to look it up, um, it's a great way to meet people. So the same as like the social like kickball yes. leagues and stuff like that. So you could join, and all you have to do is find out when your hash group meets. So the New York City one, I think, is like Wednesday nights and Sundays or something like that. So okay. I started doing that when I was working in the city. Uh, my cousin Mark, who lives in Seattle, told me about it. He came to visit, and he's like, oh, any hashing in here? I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, hashing? <laughs> so we Googled it, and it happened to be that night. Wow. So what you do is you show up at a bar. Uh-huh. You don't know where you're going and you don't know where you're running. I love this already. You don't know the distance of of anything. You can't bring anything with you except a quarter. I'm I'm sure now people are so locked with their cell phones. I'm talking about like 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, You bring a quarter and they say that's just to call. Use a payphone, which I don't know if they have them anymore, to call like 212 hash NYC or something like that if you get lost. Oh, my God. To tell you where to go. So I don't know. It's like adventure running. I don't know (laughs) if I'm explaining this correctly. So the way it works is you go to the bar. Everyone meets up. They're like, all right, we're going to start to run it. 11 a.m. So you're meeting at a bar. Are you like pre-gaming this run? Or? You can if you want. Okay. Or actually, no, no, no. I take it back. Sorry. You don't meet at a bar. You meet at like some random spot. So we've okay. met in Central Park before. You meet at the corner of whatever. And they say, okay, go. The person who's running that run that night takes your bags. If you come after work, whatever. They okay. take your bags. And you have to follow chalk arrows all around New York City or whatever city you may be. This is putting a lot of trust in strangers. Mm-hmm. Like to, well, <laughs> a lot of trust in strangers. To, to, but you end at a bar. You always end at a bar. So and, then it's worth it. But you don't know the distance. <laughs> so I've done s- some runs that were like seven miles. Okay. And if I knew that I was doing seven miles before the Hell night started, nah. I'd be like, I can't do this. Yeah. And then when you're done, like, oh, shit, I just ran seven miles. Yeah. Um, so you're if you don't find three correct or three arrow chalk marks on the same street you're going the wrong way so people who are like super fast they run with their own chalk and they'll they'll fix it so like it's it's i'm probably not explaining this correctly but if you if you like to run this sounds like, like chaos which i'm all about they have theme mm-hmm. nights so. they have like a red dress one where like everyone has to wear even the guys wear red dresses <laughs> and you're running down the street and people that are like it's like Mark's like place, the like, santa what is this? con but with like but athletic men and then <laughs> I think everyone chips in like 10 bucks and at the end there's pizzas and beers at the bar. Wow. It's great. 
Uh, and then my mind is blown that this exists. Everyone has nick. If you go often enough, you get a nickname where like you don't even an- you don't. Did you have a nickname? No, I didn't. I I went you pretty didn't often, commit. but I didn't get a nickname. I don't know. So we should um, fix that. The the leader of that night will like hold a pint of beer and be like, hey, all right, uh, everyone round up like at the bar. Uh-huh. Any visitors here? Where are you from? And, like my cousin Mark, Blake, I'm Mark. I'm from Seattle. And, like yada, yada. Like it's really cool. Uh, so now we're talking. It's it, this is a Met show, by the way. It's just fine. But if you like to run and drink beer, look up hashing. Hashing. It's, it's a worldwide. It's not about hash club. browns. It's a running club with a drinking problem, I think, or <laughs> a drinking club with a running problem. Okay. One or the other. That's cute. Um. Yeah. So check that out. Uh, I did put up a couple polls on the orange and blue thing Twitter account yesterday to, you know, get a little topics going for the show today, which clearly we clearly need help staying on track. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And if anyone wants to go to a a kick ass rager, I heard there's one this weekend. Um, My house. There might be flyers posted around the neighborhood (laughs) or something like that. Uh, There will be a karaoke machine. So that's all you need to know. My neighbors will hate me, but I'm going to have a great time. I plan on being drunk by 2 p.m. And I, I'm probably going to be drunk before 2 p.m. today. So well, it's a great week. Start now and just keep it just going. Just keep it until going. Yeah. The weekend. I might uh, as well. All right. So Orange and <laughs> Blue Thing uh, put up this poll yesterday. In 2020, have you been watching more baseball, watching less baseball, watching the same as ever? Oh, mine is for sure less. So you would have been in the same boat as 41.4%, yeah. which is bad for baseball yeah. that that many people are watching less baseball i literally have never needed to watch baseball more i do now a baseball podcast i do a baseball trivia show and like i should be watching but i can't get myself to watch i is, well a lot of people are in the same boat as yeah. you so i don't know if it is uh there might be a few factors in this are people just burnt out right now on um you know, being home. Maybe they're trying to do other things, got, trying to get the last licks in before it gets cold out. I don't uh, know. Are they more fed up with the playoff structure? Are some people, like we talked about before, just anti baseball now because of the way that they wanted to display well, their. Well, that's, that's not me for sure. I, no. It's definitely, for me, I think it's two things. One, I just think the whole format of this season is stupid. And it's like getting yourself invested in it when basically the rules change every day is just not worth it. Two, I love the Mets with my whole heart, but they're they're not super fun to watch this season. Like they get runners on base, they don't do it. They've had a few great fun wins. Yesterday was one of them, but like for the most part, it's just frustrating. And it's like you're getting yourself frustrated again for a season where the rules change every day. It's it's like whose line is it anyway? Like what is it? The rules are made up and the points don't matter. Like that's what it is. It's just so I don't know. So if you're listening, and you, you can't see this. The results here. Uh, Watching the same as ever was the winner with 43.9%, and I'd be in that boat. Uh, I make a point that if I can, I'm near the TV you know, or listening to the radio if the game is on. Um, so watch, watch the same as ever was 43.9%. Watching less was 41.4%, and watching more was 14.8%. So over 50% of the people are either watching the same or more, but unfortunately for – you know, baseball, which is kind of weird because baseball was less. like one of the first sports to, well, they wanted to be one of the first sports to come back and you thought it was going to be like, okay, well, everyone's going to watch it because there's nothing else to watch now. Like ratings will probably go up and it's hasn't, hasn't been. Well, I think ratings case. were going up. I, like, at I, first. I wrote something yesterday yeah. uh, asking that question. Some people replied that a couple, at least a couple weeks ago, um, ratings were up, but who knows now? Yeah. Uh, another thing that came out yesterday was the 2020, one, I wrote, I screwed up here and wrote 2020 spring training it's schedule because time is freaking time isn't real. Right this year is fake. It's fine. So the Mets released uh, the 2021 spring training schedule yesterday, and uh, I wanted to know if fans thought that they would be allowed in the ballpark come February 27th. I really, really hope so, but I'm not hopeful. 65 percent of the voters, uh, almost 2,000 people vote voted no with 65 percent, and you know, you know, to be honest, I'm kind of in the same boat as them. Yeah, my kid can't go to school all day without a mask yeah. i can't wait online at starbucks without standing on a, a circle on the floor yeah but you're telling me in what five months or whatever it is we're going to be shoulder to shoulder a thousand strong yeah. on the berm coming out of flu season no yeah i don't see it happening uh i don't know if you saw fantasy camp got canceled so oh, Mets fantasy no. camp which is in january thank or god to be you january. went when you did well they, they they're not calling it canceled for some reason they're postponing, postponed it to it's- november which it would be eleven month, not ten months later. So it's not really postponed. They're just doing it earlier next year. So, so 
well, I guess later because the sa- they're not doing it earlier than earlier than it would January. Be 2021. It's still one. 2021, but it's 10 months later. Is that right. really postponed? No, like postponement's like a month later, not 10 months later. Yeah, I don't no, know. That's not true. <laughs> Give me a break. All right, okay, so if it's postponed, does, does that mean the 2021 uh, camp will be in November and the 2022 one will be in January? Well, that's what I was just about to ask. Are they doing it two months later? Yeah, I don't know. I doubt it. It's very expensive. Yeah. So, like, to be able to do that two months apart, no way. So, I understand. I like the wording that they used, but... It's going to get canceled in November, too, and they're just going to be like, okay, we're going to try again in 2022. That's that's what's going to happen. They're saying that so, like, they can still get people's money, and people will still sign up to do it. Well, we all pay. I mean, you, you pay a deposit. That's what I'm saying. You don't pay in full yet, but, like, you right. pay, and this you're in the system. This way, people will pay because they, okay, this is a date that I can do it, but it's not going to happen in November. They're just going to push it to the next and year. And Doug Dickey, I don't know if you watch the show. I know some campers, you know, fellow campers. Shout out to my teammates, uh, you know, MVP over here. But, um... We uh, go. time to wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, you know, we understand that it's a very tough decision, and no one there is like a, a Facebook uh, group that yeah. that a lot of people comment on, and you know, you got to be a, a past camper or whatever to be in the group. And everyone understands the decision. Doug Dickey does a phenomenal job. No one's trying to throw him under the bus. Right. It's a very tough decision to make, and a lot of the campers are older. Yeah. To, you know, I'm 39, but I'm like the youngest one yeah. there. Um, I'll be 40 soon yeah unfortunately well fortunately fuck it who cares let's go uh a lot of the campers are older a lot of the coaches are older so i guess if they think of it that way you're in a a locker room setting so i understand what they're talking about in that in that sense but ballpark i have no idea so the reason why i can't get overly excited right now uh with the planning of how fired up i get for next season is think of it this way Let's Kelly brought this up to me. Mm-hmm. We have six hundred and what? How many members do we have? I always ask Lizzie. Six thirty-five. Six hundred and thirty-five members, including us. Mm-hmm. Um, we have eight hundred and fifty-nine seats in the Big Apple Reserve. Right. Think of it this way. Here we which go. You don't want to think about, but think <laughs> of it this way. Let's say they decide to do fifty percent capacity next year, right? They have to cut people. We have that means we would have uh, you know a little little over four hundred seats. Do we then tell? 200 members they're not allowed to renew yeah you can't do that so like you it's and it can't be like a first come first serve either no i feel like you'd have to split squad it and be like you can get these games and these games that and would this be person a this nightmare game. yeah it a would. nightmare so i already know i know our schedule like yeah. i know our schedule i know where we're going i know the road games i know i know everything right now i'm not making it public because i don't want to get people's hopes up right and i understand the mets need to get people's hopes up because they That's are running their job a, a, you know steve cohen didn't just buy a right a, a, a billions of dollars on a team to not sell tickets i understand that they have to do their jobs but my job so far was to tell the team these are the games i want to commit to which we did i already committed we have the 10 games and uh i just told you guys 10 games and we have the away ones locked up but are we going to be able to go to them i have no idea yeah so what do we then do with all the jerseys from this year. We ordered thousands of jerseys, which we were deciding to then use for next year. So yeah. breaking news, um, you know, wow. we are not in the business to go burn thousands of jerseys. So if there are games next year, you're going to get the one that you would have gotten this year. Yeah. So the New York on the chest, unfortunately the patch on the sleeve, it's small. It says 2020 right. on it. But we'll just pretend that this year never in happened. In memoriam of 2020. So yeah, Bye. so that's that's the deal. So um Next year, like the same with our members. We can't tell our 600 members they have to get another package and get another jersey. Yeah. They have the jersey already. We didn't get to wear them yet to the game. Yeah. So next year is very stressful. I'm already, I'm thinking about it now and getting myself anxious. (laughs) But back to the Mets, they have to sell tickets. But when when people are buying, I don't know anyone that's bought tickets yet. Maybe people can comment if they have in the comments. Um, Are they getting seat numbers? Because how could you purchase tickets you right can't. now knowing if they're going to be separated or not? And we can't go to our 600 members and be like, all right, time to renew, but they might do 50% capacity and you might not be able to even go to the I game. I just really think like the only way it works is to like skip every other row. So you're not breathing on or getting breathed on. And but like, then we, we, it wouldn't, we can't. I know. And then it, and also is to like have like every three inch of that seats section. between like families or parties and you can't do that like you said in like a seven line section so i don't i don't know they it's and it's one of those things where like you do have to kind of wait and see like what the state of the world is like when the time comes but these aren't things that you can do last minute like you know who's gonna figure this out steve cohen steve cohen let's go steve a and we're, we'll all celebrate it together at the gala it's oh my great God. we'll have the bobblehead yeah 
the, maybe the bobblehead will be holding like the vaccine. I, you know, I gotta get a new for suit. Corona. I gotta get like a nice new suit. <laughs> I get, maybe I'll hit up the, next week. We got Dave Rod on the show. I'm gonna ask him. Oh my god! You forgot? No, I I can't forget. But like, it's just next week. It's next crazy. Thursday, guys. If you're watching, you haven't heard yet. David Wright, he's gonna be on the show finally. And if the Mets, you know, if 80, what is it? 80. They have an 81 percent chance of not making the playoffs. <laughs> then that means next week would be our last show of the season. Uh, so Dave Wright's gonna put a bow on it. What a great way us. to go. Yeah. So I gotta get a new suit. Maybe I'll ask David, like, "Hey, where can I get a new suit?" I thought you were gonna say you need to get a suit for like next week's show. <laughs> no, I wear <laughs> like, a bow tie. That serious? Uh, like uh, Gelbs when he pretended he was like doing the breaking news thing. Yeah. Um, oh, that was hysterical. He texted me last night. Did you see my tweet? I wasn't. I, I didn't at him because I wasn't trying to like. <sighs> didn't his car get towed? <laughs> yeah, but we heard about it like twenty times on yeah. the broadcast. But whatever. So I wrote like. I love Steve. I understand he's got to get a paycheck. They got to find a way to keep him involved in the broadcast. Right. Like, he's just doing his job. There's nothing against Steve. But the whole check in with Steve from like the studio, studio. at SNY in New it's York City weird. does nothing for me. Yeah. And I, and then he texted me. He's like, damn, bro. I'm like, <laughs> but, like he was like, joke, you know, and I'm like, I'm like, hey, I, you know, sorry, but I was just, yeah. just being honest. It's yeah. weird to me. Like, him sitting in the ballpark in the cutouts and stuff great that's fine because yeah. he's there he's part there of it. yeah but i was like maybe if they just found like a suite for you to sit in on the road game yeah like let him come but, but the anyway. view from from that broadcast was really beautiful yeah i was looking at like the bridge and i was like man you know so, that's a are you so serious pretty. no that's out the window no it's not <laughs> yes it is <laughs> Isn't it out the window from the studio? No, I don't think it it's is. It's like some Fuck. cheese. It's like a wallpaper. No, it's not. It was moving. There was, there was, there was. I've been in that studio before, and that uh, window. Fuck. I don't. There, they, they moved studios. There is, been there, there is the normal. There is a spot where there is a window. Uh, don't get me wrong. You're right on that. The boats but, were moving. <laughs> it wasn't a photo. Late, I promise. Lately, it's just been like a photo. Gelbs, let me know. <laughs> That's Lizzie, by the way. That's like a Photoshop thing behind him. No, it was it, bo the boats. Were this moving. is the great debate of this week. <laughs> is the background behind Gelbs real or fake? It's Please, definitely God, fake. that made me sweat. Please I really hope your, it's real. Your opinion. <laughs> when we got her today, know. I was like, "Hey, let's, let's." Darren, make a poll. <laughs> <laughs> is it real or fake? I was like, "Let's leave the door open, get some fresh air in here." She's like, "We need the air conditioning." <laughs> It's so hot in here. I was like, Guys, it's really I'm not that hot. In here. I don't think you understand. No, it's freezing in here now. That's why you got that nifty little hat on. Yeah, I'm gonna do a quick plug for ourselves here. Uh, I was going through some inventory yesterday and, or two days ago and came across three of the home run apple beanies, and we are giving away one away on Instagram, one again, one away on Twitter, one away on Facebook. Very easy to enter. I'm, I have it on the screen here, the Instagram version. The reason why we're getting rid of these is because the home run apple is getting a major, major upgrade. So if you want one for free, it's very easy to enter. Go on one of our social platforms, scroll back, and you'll be able to figure out how to do that. I don't know if you guys can see that great if you're watching live. Yeah, like bow down a little bit. This hat here. Hold on a second. <laughs> oh, he's going he's gonna to show it off. Oh, up close Whoa. and personal. Let's go. <laughs> we have Darren Mean and modeling today. So <laughs> I'll show it off. I don't know when, but... The, there's a gigantic difference in this hat than the ones past. We upgraded the knit. It's more of um, it's like a rib. Looks cozier. Yeah, it's like a rib knit. It fits great. We're doing. We did a chain stitch embroidery on the Mets logo. Chain stitch home run and changed the palm from like the stringy version to like more of this like plush pom one. Palm. So uh, those will be here pretty soon. And uh, this is now version three of the home run apple beanie. Oh. A lot of people didn't notice it. I was going to say I didn't notice there was a second it, one. It took me thousands of hats sold to realize that the the stitching in the Mets logo here and the mm -hmm. original hat was red, not orange. So no one noticed because when you compare it, when you're wearing it, right, and the red look hat, the same. like your eye gets tricked, I guess. Uh, not that they were like wrong. Well, right. I guess they were kind of wrong. The thread was wrong. So this is now version three wow, of the yeah. Home Run Apple Beanie. Those will be going up pretty this soon. This one's the best one. Yeah. No, it's so, it's, it it it's looks great. really cool. It might not translate that great to photographs or vi video, but I'll try to do my best. But uh, something that definitely does translate great in photographs are the dugout mugs. And our friends from Dugout Mugs have a phenomenal offer for us this week and for you guys this week. So go to dugoutmugs.com slash Seaver30 and um, you can get 30% off their Tom Seaver mug. So as you know, Dugout Mugs, based out of Florida, they have the MLB license, the MLB PA license, and they work with the Hall of Fame. So they have a whole Hall of Fame um, series of mugs and obviously our beloved Tom Seaver is more than a Hall of Famer. He's 
uh, everything and more. So go to dugoutmugs.com slash Seaver30 and uh, check out this Seaver mug. You can get 30% off uh, and they will ship it right to you. So if awesome. you, I will zoom in on this one because I have a Pia- Piazza one here in person. So if you see that dugout mugs on the end, it's got the signature series and the name on the bottom. So same thing. And uh, they have so many great options on their website. The holiday season is coming up. These make excellent gifts. This one is the season opener, the bottom of a baseball bat with a, uh, a b- opener on top. They also have what's the knob shots. Yeah. They have a whole bunch of great options. Based out of Florida, we had Randall on the show last week talking all about the business and how he, he came up with the idea. When he was in the, it, what did he say? He was in the dugout, one of his games, and the, and the coach cut the top off yeah. to like teach him something about swinging. And He's his like, first thought was, I, I could drink beer I could out, drink of that. out of that. <laughs> So hit up dugoutmugs.com. Check out all the different options they have. Maybe you have a friend or a loved one that is not a Mets fan, unfortunately. Uh, for them, they can uh, pick up a great mug on their website. And Julia keeps talking about this, the photo dugout mug. She's got to step that up. Maybe you already did and you don't want your dad to know because he watches the show. Maybe. It was going to be a gift, right? Yes. Gift for your dad. Maybe. So definitely go check them out and swig for the fences on dugout mugs. So... Another fun show coming to a close. I know you got to go get your drink on with the girls. I do. Busy birthday day for Birthday weekend. Me. Do you do birthday weekend? Not intentionally. Lizzie used to be big on birthday weekend. It's not intentionally. It's just my birthday is on a Friday. My friend is off today and willing to celebrate today. My parents want to go out to dinner tomorrow. And then, like, I wanted to have, like, something at my house, but I'm not going to do it, like, a Friday waiting for people to get out of work. We'll do, like, an all-day Saturday thing. People can come whenever. So, unintentionally, it's a birthday. And then Sunday is my designated hangover day where I'm just going <laughs> to be a potato the well, entire day. My wife will be at your party. I will Love be that in for me. Massachusetts. So exciting. Um, when I get back on the ferry, my job is to come pick her up. So, I am going to your party, but, oh, like, for a second. Perfect. Look at one karaoke song in there what's your go-to karaoke song do you i don't have one? sing i don't know darren come on baby got back let's go i will have it ready <laughs> you have to play up. something with like a whistle <laughs> I love a that. whistle solo because darren whistles all oh, day we Listen, do that this is the northeast vet championship if i come back with a trophy i will sing anything you I, want. I just love how he tried to act like he didn't have a go-to song i don't he was like baby got it back. was the first thing that came to my mind seriously <laughs> well all right well now it's uh, what, what time you think you'll get there I'm taking the – well, it gets dark early now, uh-huh. So that, and you obviously can't race in the dark. Right. But um, my dad – long story short, my dad's first cousin, my second cousin, yes. is this world champion racer uh-huh. up there, and he's racing also. <gasps> That's so So it's going to be cool. pretty cool to like see my my cousin and you know his sister, my other cousin, right. is going to be there as well. So Awesome. Uh, not that I'm going to try to linger because i got to catch the ferry, right. but – the ferry, the last ferry home from Bridgeport to Long Island is 8.30. Okay. And it's an hour and 15 minutes, so 9.45. Okay. I want to drop the RV off at my house because your block's probably going to be mobbed and this yeah. thing's 30-something feet. Yeah. And But we live like five minutes apart. Right. So I should be there, long story short, about 10.15. Perfect. That is peak <laughs> karaoke time. Everyone's going to be a great it's be a drunk. long freaking day to it's be like be in Massachusetts, racing dirt bikes, and then take a ferry and then go to a party. And sink baby got back for... 20 25 30 people Let, i i'm on i'm all about it very excited i'll make sure it's ready all right let, let kelly know when you're like five minutes away and i'm gonna have it i will i will I absolutely will all right guys <laughs> so uh Mets, if you're watching this 11 games left step it up stevie cohen if you're watching this invite us uh, to the gala. yeah i'll send you my address for the invitation <laughs> to the gala and um uh, that's it happy birthday to julia thank you happy birthday to Mahomes. <laughs> and um, we'll see you guys next week. We didn't do what's in the box, so next week somebody give us a shout. And so Coors Light, send me my cake. Free stuff. Yeah, free cakes. <laughs> Dugout mugs, Coors Light. Thank you guys. See you next week. Happy birthday. Let's Thank go, Matt. Happy birthday. Thank you.